first at five. Nearly one week after the Centers for Disease Control announced San Antonio would be home to a coronavirus quarantine facility. The group of evacuees from China have arrived to Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. Our Jesse DeGuiato is at JBSA Lackland right now where the CDC just wrapped up a press conference. Jesse, what can you tell us about what they had to say? Well, first off, we now know that a smaller number of evacuees, American evacuees apparently, are now here at JBSA Lackland. Less than 100 of them, all we're told, are symptom-free men, women, children, and even babies. Now, after first landing at uh, Travis Air Force Base in California, where they were screened and their temperatures taken, then many of them reboarded, landing just after about noon today in a private plane chartered by the State Department here at JBSA Lackland. Now, their stay here here will be in a hotel on base and it will be part of 14 day federal quarantine period. The first issued in 60 years, the CDC says 14 days. They know is the uh, what they know is the incubation period as far as what they know now. But where now that's where they will be checked daily. They were told at that hotel. While in quarantine, everyone is going to undergo twice daily temperature screens and we have medical staff there at their housing 24 hours a day for the entirety of their quarantine period. So if anyone shows any signs of illness, they will receive an immediate medical evaluation and anyone who is ill with symptoms of coronavirus will be transported very quickly by EMS to a hospital that has been arranged through uh, the local San Antonio Health Department. And she went on to say that even if they have a temperature of 100.4 degree temperature, that will be enough to send them to the hospital. Now, which one? She wouldn't say. Obviously, there is concerns. Is it going to be a military hospital? Is it going to be a, a public hospital? But she says that hospitals across America already have been preparing for the coronavirus, and so they will know what to do. And if there is a confirmed case of coronavirus here in San Antonio, they of course will let us know. But again, the evacuees, less than 100 of them who arrived earlier today, they say are symptom free. We're live here outside Lack JPSA Lackland, Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jesse. All good information there. Have you seen this girl? Her name is Cheyenne Hernandez. She is 15 years old and was last seen January 31st at a home on New Sulphur Springs Road. That's on the far southeast side near South Foster Road. The Barrow County Sheriff's Office is asking for information on her whereabouts. If you've seen her or you know where she is, contact the Sheriff's Office at 210-335-6000. A San Antonio police officer finds himself on the other side of the law. A two count indictment accuses 25 year old Sebastian Torres of distribution and possession of child pornography. Torres was arrested yesterday morning and is currently on administrative leave. Torres served as a patrol officer for two years with the San Antonio Police Department. He faces up to 20 years in prison for each charge. In a statement, San Antonio Police Chief William McManus said in part, quote, the charges against Torres are deeply disturbing. When I was initially made aware of the allegations, he was immediately placed on administrative duty and a joint investigation with the FBI was launched. As a result of his arrest, Torres is now on administrative leave and the case remains under investigation, end quote. A detention hearing is expected to take place sometime next week. A call to repair his cable ended up uncovering an alleged case of child sex abuse. 75-year-old Paul Zapp III accused of sexually assaulting a young boy and girl, and police believe it may have gone on for years. Arrest records say investigators found videos of the alleged assaults on his cell phone. This after a cable repairman reported seeing child pornography on his computer while he was at Zapp's home for a repair. He was arrested on several charges. He's currently being held in jail with bonds totaling $200,000. Dismantling gangs throughout the San Antonio area. It's an effort being taken on by multiple law enforcement agencies and the Bear County District Attorney's Office. The collaborative is called the Texas Anti-Gang Initiative, or TAG. Today, members of the task force spoke about some recent convictions, including those of Rudy Smith, a documented member of Tango Orajon. Smith serving life in prison for murder and for being involved in a shootout with law enforcement. And Tyler Collins, a documented member of the Bloods sentenced to life in prison on a capital murder charge.
Our uh, goal is to take these people off the street, uh, to identify them, to work together, and, and to go to, to court and, and get maximum punishment. Officials ask anyone who witnesses gang activity to report it anonymously at stopsanantoniogangs.org. Devin Clark will have a full report coming up on the News at 6. We have now learned the name of a 23-year-old man killed in an overnight crash downtown. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying him as Jesus Vicente Gonzalez Jr. Police say at around 2 this morning, Gonzalez slammed into a concrete wall along I-37 in Commerce. It caused his SUV to go airborne. According to police, he was speeding and was not wearing a seatbelt. It is unclear whether he was thrown from the vehicle, but officers found him outside of the SUV. Investigators are now looking into what caused him to make that crash. He's accused of stealing thousands of dollars using other people's IDs. Now 42-year-old Tyler Anderson Freeman facing a long list of charges. San Antonio police tracked him down using surveillance video from the credit union where he carried out at least one of the crimes. According to police, he used fake accounts to get a car loan. He even managed to steal someone's tax return. One victim reported losing $38,000, another reported losing $10,000. Freeman is charged with fraud, theft, money laundering, and tampering with evidence. Meantime, San Antonio police are still looking for a trio of smash and grab suspects who stole $100,000 worth of merchandise yesterday from Tiffany and Company at the shops at La Quintera. According to police, the suspects were all wearing sunglasses and baseball caps when they smashed a glass case and grabbed up the jewelry. They ended up running off and getting away. Police did not say how many pieces of jewelry were taken or whether they have persons of interest in this case. Seven Democratic candidates will take to the debate stage tonight in New Hampshire. Bernie Sanders, Pete Buttigieg, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, Andrew Yang, and Tom Steyer. It is the first debate since the debacle at the Iowa caucuses. And just a few days before the New Hampshire primary, Nadia Romero joins us now live from Manchester. So, Nadia, tell us what can we expect from the moderators asking tonight? Well, Ursula and Steve, we know that people here in New Hampshire care about health care. We saw it in the 2018 midterms, and here we are again. So expect a robust debate about Medicare for all. Climate change in the economy round out the top three priorities here. Snow covered St. Anselm College in Manchester, New Hampshire, the home of the next Democratic debate. And with more uncertainty in Iowa. <laughs> We've got enough of Iowa. I think we should... <laughs> Move on to New Hampshire. I'm focused on what's happened here in uh, New Hampshire. The focus Friday night is the debate stage on campus. I know a lot of the discussions we've had on the debate stage are about what's the best health care plan, uh, what's the best college plan. Education policy tops the list of concerns for student Caroline Scott. Personally, for me, school choice is a really big one. I grew up, I went to a charter school in high school, um, and I thought it was a much better experience than a lot of the public schools in the area. From policies to ads. As president, I will always have your back. And to campaign stops where first-time voter Madeline Lindsay met Tulsi Gabbard, who focused her efforts on the Granite State. She's actually a nice middle ground kind of candidate where people who might be more conservative on some things, but like people that are more independent in the middle, I think would really like her views on a lot of things. <laughs> Working on campus, Lori Tyrion says she's paying attention to all the candidates, but honestly, she'll take anyone but President Trump. If Trump comes in, you know what? Hey, you know, we do the best that we can. Um, I don't think everybody's going to be that happy if it does come about, but I think we do need to change. So a new poll just released within the last hour shows Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg neck and neck here in New Hampshire. Live from Manchester, I'm Nadia Romero. Steve, back to you. Nadia, how important is tonight leading into next week's primary? Which candidates could be in danger of seeing the end of the road if they fall short of expectations during the primary on Tuesday? Well, Steve, if you look at a candidate like Amy Klobuchar, she spent so much money, time and energy in Iowa, and she had a strong showing there in fourth place, but she has to do better here in New Hampshire to continue her presidential run. Steve? Nadia Romero live from New Hampshire. Thank you, Nadia. Now we go to a recall alert. Thousands of baby carriers are being recalled over a faulty buckle. The brand is Infantino, and the models were sold at Target and on Amazon between November and December of 2019.
The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission says the buckle can break and the child can fall out. No injuries have been reported yet. If you have any of these models, though, you're being asked to stop using it and return it for a replacement. You can find all this information on KSAT.com. A bright, sunny Friday. Quite a temperature swing, though, throughout the day today. Started off with a bit of a chill in the air, and then it became very comfortable as we ventured into the afternoon. Take a look at our uh, almanac today. 34 earlier this morning, just two degrees above the freezing point here in San Antonio. And then we climbed to 74 into the afternoon. It's one of those days that we see often this time of year where you get that huge temperature spread from the morning to the afternoon. Not quite as drastic as we go into the weekend. Right now, 80 Del Rio and Eagle Pass. We're 78 in Mike's backyard in Floresville. Lakey right now, 72 and Seguin at 74. For the most part, just very comfortable outside right now and temperatures falling off. No. Well, Rather quickly as we go through the rest of the evening, we'll have a clear sky out there and temperatures falling down generally, I think, into the 40s by early tomorrow morning. So we'll be back to talk about that and, of course, your weekend and a favorable pattern for rain coming up.